Plagiarism is a big issue in many industries, especially in academia, and this phenomenon has worsened with the rise of the internet, where anyone can access any information at the click. Researchers have tried to implement multiple text analytic solutions. However, these traditional tools suffer from two main issues. The first one is content refusal. The problem here is that they might not take into consideration the synonyms, antonyms of the overall content. The second one is translation. Content translation completely shifts the context of the original documents into another language. In this tutorial, I'll explain you how you can tackle these issues using Transformer Bird. Before diving into any technical implementation, let's understand the general workflow of the tool that we're trying to build. The first step is to pre-process the source data and then perform the embedding generation using a BERT model. And from a new document provided by the user, we start by checking the language of a document. If the language is non-English, then we translate it into English using the machine translation model. Otherwise, we send the data straight to BERT model in order to generate the embedding. Once we have the embedding of the incoming documents, then we can perform the similarity analysis between that vector and the existing vectors in the vector index. This comparative analysis is performed using a cosine similarity. And from the result of the cosine similarity, we compare that with a specified threshold by the user. If the similarity score is below the threshold, then we say that there is no plagiarism, otherwise there is plagiarism. Alright, now that we have a better understanding of what to expect, let's start the technical implementation. And the first step is to load the data. This data is being collected from cargo and is 20 gigabyte large. For simplicity's sake, I have implemented this helper function that returns a sample of that data and it also returns only two main columns the abstract of the research paper and also the unique identifier of that paper and once we have that function we apply it to the data set using hundreds observations right after that we can check on um, five random samples of the data and here we see this abstract has this unique um, paper identifier. Okay, we have the data. Now the next step is to create the embeddings of each abstract. And this starts by installing the necessary libraries, transformers, and torch. After the installation of those libraries, we import the necessary modules from those libraries. And here we have three main variables. Um, the first one is the name of the model, the second one is the tokenizer, and the third one is the actual process of loading the model that um, we will be using to create the embeddings. And this model is the BERT um, base on case model. Once we have the model, the next step is to create the actual function that is going to perform the embedding. This function has four main parameters. The first one is the tokenizer, the second one the model, the third is the text we are trying to generate the embedding and the maximum length is um, important here because we are considering that 110 tokens is enough to have a better understanding of what an abstract might be about. And also BERT's limitation is 512 tokens and we reserve the last two for the special tokens for BERT. Many things are happening in this function and the first one is the generation of the input IDs of the text. Here we specify the maximum length which is 510 and we add the special tokens that I have mentioned. Next we pad the input text because this is necessary for um, text with more than 510 tokens. Imagine having an abstract with 600 tokens. What we perform is to pad the remaining tokens. And after that, we generate the attention mask and put the model in evaluation mode in order to 
perform the feed forward operation. Then we apply the BERT model to all the information here in order to generate the embedding that is extracted. And finally, we return that embedding. So embedding and vector are, you know, are used to mean the same thing here. The previous function generates the embedding for a single text. We apply that function to generate the embedding for all the data sets. And this starts by creating the helper function here, creates vector database. And this vector database takes in parameter the original data set and performs some analysis here. It goes through all the um, abstract values and generate the vector. This vector is added to a list of vectors. Then we create a new column called vectors, which is finally reshaped to make it ready for the similarity analysis that we will perform in the next steps. Okay, we have the function, then we create so the vector database using this instruction and finally show on um, five random observations and here we have the framing columns abstracts paper id and the new vectors generated by the previous function the next step in how pipeline is the language translation which is performed using the marian uh, machine translation model so we install sentence space and from transformer imports the model and the corresponding tokenizer okay so since we are trying to convert languages into um, English I have decided to take those candidate languages I don't mean to cover all the languages of the world so for this simple use case I'm using French um, German Greek Japanese Russian and okay maybe in the future I'll be adding more languages Okay, we have this list of language and we use the lang detect module in order to detect the language of a given text. So this function has the text we are trying to translate, the language of that text and the target language which is English. We start by loading the language translation model, then load the tokenizer and finally run the translation process from all the previous functions we can finally uh, implement the logic of the plagiarism detection so this starts by using the cosine similarity because we will check the similarity between two vectors and we use the cosine similarity from on um, scikit learn and this starts uh, with a couple of functions the first one is to pre-process the incoming text. This incoming text is pre-processed in order to, first of all, create the vector and finally reshape that vector in the way that we can use the cosine similarity. The next function returns true if there is plagiarism and false if there is no plagiarism. So this is done by checking the similarity score against the plagiarism thresholds. The check incoming document start by identifying the language of the document. So if that language is English, then there is no translation. Otherwise, we translate um, the document in English and return the final results. This last function is the one used to run the actual plagiarism detection um, model. First, we have the query text, the one provided by the user, the existing database, and the plagiarism thresholds, which is by default 80%. So this means that if the similarity score is higher or equal to 80%, then we claim that there is um, a plagiarism. Otherwise, there is no plagiarism. First, we check the incoming document and if the language does not exist in the list of languages we have provided, then we prompt the user with this message. Next, we process the document to get the required vector for similarity analysis. Here, we create a new column called similarity, which is a similarity score between the query vector and every claim in the database. And next, we sort the similarity score in decreasing order so that the most similar documents to the query text 
is going to be um, on the top and the list similar is going to be um, on the bottom of the results of the similarity. And finally, we create a dictionary we form in case on the similarity score, which is on the similarity score between the query document and the most similar document is plagiarism, which is a Boolean value telling if there is a plagiarism or not. The most similar article is the actual article where we have the highest match of similarity. And finally, the article submitted, which is the original article submitted by the user. All right, we have all the functions to finally run the plagiarism analysis. The first thing we are doing here is to check on the plagiarism between the first um, abstract against itself. And like the result is obvious here, which is going to be 100% plagiarism because we are um, running the um, plagiarism against itself. And we have both texts that are the same and obviously is plagiarism is true here. The next example, we provide the system with a French document and we run the plagiarism analysis between that French document and the existing database. The result is that there is no plagiarism and the similarity score is 78%. The most similar article is um, this one and the original article submitted by the user is this one in French, les réseaux d'innovation et de transfert agricole, and so on. And the last but not the least is an abstract in German. To all the German folks in this channel, let me know what you think of the results of the model. And similarly to the previous steps, we run the plagiarism detection and we get these results. The model is telling that there is plagiarism with 97% of similarity. This is the original article submitted here and there we have the most similar article um, in the database. All right, that's all for this tutorial. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up and drop in the comment section if there are some specific topic that you want me to cover in my next videos. Also, I'll provide the notebook in the description below so that you can run the experimentation yourself. Thank you for watching and bye-bye. See you next time.